This video is made for entertainment and educational purposes only. All photographs that are modern in nature are to help describe our story in the video. The photographs are used under the Fair Use Clause of the 1976 Copyright Act. While we talk about the turbulent history of Kentucky and Tennessee with the tobacco wars, we are in no way advocating for the use of tobacco and tobacco products. As with all of our stories, we try to give all sides to the story and let you, our viewers and readers, make up your own minds as to the facts of what happened during the tobacco wars. The 35 counties involved in the Black Patch are in southwestern Kentucky and northwestern Tennessee. This area is called the Black Patch because it is the main supplier for dark fired tobacco. Dark fired tobacco is used in snuff, chewing tobacco, and pipe tobacco. During the years of 1904 through 1909, there was great civil unrest in the tobacco fields of Kentucky and Tennessee. In part one, we will discover the players and the circumstances that led to the buildup of the tobacco wars. This was actually a three-sided war between the American Tobacco Company, or the ATC, owned by James B. Duke, the Dark Tobacco District Planters Protective Association, or the PPA, of Kentucky, and the Dark Tobacco District Planters Protection Association, PPA, of Tennessee. Who was James Buchanan Buck Duke? Born on December 23, 1856, in Durham, North Carolina, to George Washington Duke and his second wife, Artelia Rodney Duke. James had two half-siblings by the name of Sidney Taylor Duke and Brody Leonidas Duke, and two full siblings by the names of Mary Elizabeth Duke Lyon and Benjamin Newton Duke. James would marry Lillian Fletcher McCready, also known as Lillian Nanette Duke, in 1904, and they would divorce in 1906 and had no children. Duke would marry Nataline Lee Holt in 1907. He would have a daughter by the name of Doris Duke with Nataline, who was born November 22, 1912. An ambitious North Carolina businessman and planter, James Buchanan Buck Duke, figured out that he could make more money by buying and selling tobacco rather than growing it himself. With this knowledge, Duke established the W. Duke Sons and Company in 1879 to produce tobacco and cigarettes, the automated cigarette rolling machine. In 1881, John Bosack invented the commercial cigarette rolling machine. Duke quickly obtained a license to use the first automated pre-rolled tobacco machine. Duke purchased the two machines and was able to produce 400 cigarettes in a minute. In 1884, Duke struck a deal with Bonzac to use his machines exclusively in exchange for lower royalties. This allowed Duke to drop his prices and the other companies could not compete in the market. At this time, Duke would hold 40% of the cigarette market in the United States. The American Tobacco Company In 1890, Duke was able to consolidate with the other companies to form the American Tobacco Company and would gain control of 90% of the tobacco market. By 1900, the ATC had complete control of the American tobacco market. Because of this control, Duke was able to reduce tobacco buying price thus causing many farmers to go into bankruptcies and lose their farms. These Robin Baron tactics of Dukes is the spark that started the tobacco wars. Who was Felix Grundy Ewing? On August 8, 1858, Felix Grundy Ewing was born in Nashville, Tennessee to John Overton and Sally Bass Ewing. John was the treasurer of a railroad company and a farmer. Sometime before 1904, Felix moved to Adams, Kentucky, near the Kentucky-Tennessee state line, and bought the Glen Raven Plantation. Felix Ewing was a successful, wealthy tobacco planter and had turned Glen Raven Plantation into a company town, complete with a church, stores, post office, and homes for its sharecroppers and tenant farmers. Tired of getting deflated prices for the product? 
often not meeting the cost of planting and harvesting the tobacco, and wanting control over the sale of their own crops, the farmers began to come together. Because of the lower prices that Ewing was getting for his tobacco, and the fact that many people working for him had started to defect to cotton growing plantations, he came up with a plan. The Dark Tobacco District Planters Protective Association of Kentucky and Tennessee. The first thing Ewing did was hold a meeting of 5,000 residents of the area on September 24, 1904 in Guthrie, Kentucky. His idea was for all farmers to place their tobacco with the association to be held until the asking price for the tobacco was reached. The Dark Tobacco District Planters Protective Association of Kentucky and Tennessee was formed and officers were elected and a charter was drawn up and approved. This was such a good idea that the membership numbers began to soar and included judges, farmers, businessmen, prosecutors, and law enforcement officers. However, this group of people did cause added tensions to the area, and the spark was ignited that started the unrest and violence in the area. Membership Drives One of the articles that was placed in the charter was that each member of the PPA would use their influence to get other farmers to join with the collective. Many farmers were opposed to this idea and refused to join. Those that did not join were given the name, quote, hillbillies, unquote. Now, being an Appalachian hillbilly myself, the term is not often seen as derogatory. However, in this context, my apologies to my fellow hill folks, but that is what they called those that would not join their association. As the tensions between the members and the non-members grew, it eventually escalated to violence to convince others to join the growing group. By 1905, the conditions began to worsen in the area. Members began to withdraw from the PPA. There was no peaceful resolution as the farmers had hoped that there would be. As the group began to gain membership, more radical people began to grab power in the group as Ewing himself became ill. This led to the election of Dr. David Amos from Cobb County, Kentucky. Through Dr. Amos's leadership, things would turn ugly and war was declared upon those that would not join the PPA. There is no early life record of Dr. David Amos available at this time. In our next video, we will discuss the Silent Brigades and the Night Raiders. As this section of history and the tobacco wars begin to heat up and become more angry. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for your continued support as we bring to you the history of Kentucky and Tennessee.